Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at inter-VLAN routing using Layer 3 switches. We'll be discussing Layer 3 switch inter-VLAN routing, Layer 3 switch configuration, and finally, routing on a Layer 3 switch. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless networks. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. When we talk about layer three switches, once again, a layer three switch combines a layer two switch and a layer three router together. It, it gives you all in one chassis. It gives you the functionality in one device instead of having two separate devices. When we set up inter VLAN routing on a layer three switch, we have to create a switch virtual interface. Those switch virtual interfaces are created the same way that we create them on a layer two switch. The difference here is on a layer two switch, we only create one switch virtual interface to allow you to manage it, to manage it. But on a layer three switch, each VLAN needs to have its own SVI. That way the layer three switch, when it does its routing, can route to those switch virtual interfaces. Now it, prefer, it performs the same functions as a router interface. When we do that, it provides the layer three processing for packets and it looks at the packets, it processes them, gets the information, decides on how to route it best. And then all, all the switch ports need to be in that VLAN. There are several advantages for a layer three switch to do inter VLAN routing than the older method of a router on a stick. Now for a layer three switch, it's faster because everything is done in hardware. Everything is, all the decisions are done in hardware. If we're doing router on a stick and we have to send it from a layer two switch to a layer three switch, that layer three switch then processes that in memory. It uses processor, it uses RAM to do that. It's slower. Another advantage is we don't have to have any external links. Router on a stick, you have a switch that has a trunk port that goes to a router. On a layer three switch, it's all in one device. It's all done in hardware. We don't have to worry about sending that information someplace else. We could also get a higher bandwidth because we can use ether channel. We can use a layer two ether channel. We can combine multiple connections between devices together to be one virtual connection to give you a bigger throughput. You can have two one gig ports that'll give you two gigabits of throughput. Where if you're just using a layer two switch and a layer three switch router on a stick, you can only have one connection. You can't do ether channel. Latency is a lot lower using layer three switch because we don't have to send it to other devices. We don't have to process in RAM. And we see that in today's IT world and production environments that layer three switches are being deployed more and more. Router on a stick is on its way out. Layer three switches, that's what everybody is slowly transitioning to. There is a disadvantage to our layer three switches. They are typically more expensive, but most companies see the advantage and they're willing to spend a little bit more money to give them a better solution, to get them the, the faster throughput, then you don't have to have the external links. You can get ether channels. A lot of companies realize that it is a better solution and it's a better technology overall. When we look at router on a stick, Router on a stick is great to implement here in a small to medium sized business. And what we're talking about is a couple hundred employees up to a couple thousand, maybe 10,000 at the most. Router on a stick works great in today's environment. But in a bigger environment, larger enterprises, they need faster, they need more scalable. We're looking at tens of thousands of users, if not a hundred thousands of users. And we need to be, these devices to be handled at layer three switches. They do provide the faster and the more scalability. Layer three switches, when we sit down and we start working with them, they provide our inter VLAN routing and campus networks. And what we mean by campus networks is companies that have multiple locations 
they use layer three switches quite a lot. It's hardware-based switching because we can get a lot more packets through in a shorter amount of time. And they typically go into that distribution layer. These layer three switches typically go into the distribution layer. Remember we had the three layers. We had the core layer, the distribution layer, and the access layer. Layer three switches typically live in that layer three area that, that allows you to move data fairly quickly from a main point to a main point or building to building or location to location. In order for us to do layer three routing, route from one VLAN to another, we have to have multiple SVI, switch virtual interfaces, that allows us to go from one switch virtual interface that's on one network, the, then the, the routing capabilities of that layer three switch, then route it to another one. It looks at that layer two frame header, looks at that 802.1Q frame tag, identifies it, makes a decision based on the IP address on, on how to route that. And then we retag it again if we're sending it back out a port. But what we have to do is on a layer three switch, all the ports start off as a layer two switch port. Just like we're used to working on a normal layer two switch, we have to then take that switch port and convert it into a layer three interface. Now notice the vocabulary, layer two switch port to a layer three interface. Layer two switch port is sending data in and out. Layer three interface is now we're starting to make decisions based upon that. Once we turn that into a layer three interface, that becomes a routed port. And that routed port is very simil similar in functionality and how it works and setup as how the physical interfaces on the router works. S SVIs are configured using the same commands on a layer three switch as they are on a layer two switch. You interface VLAN and you put your VLAN ID in there, it creates it, you can go in there and name it, then you assign an IP address to it. It's created in the same way. The thing to remember is for every VLAN, for, you have to create a layer three switch virtual interface for every VLAN so we can route between them. If you like this episode on inter-VLAN routing using layer three switches and you get value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using, please click the like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Here we have a scenario where this is what the symbol for a layer three switch looks like. It, it kind of has a ball in the center and it has arrows pointing out from there. This is a layer three switch. So if you ever see this in a diagram or something like that, that's what we're looking at is a layer three switch. It has the layer two switch ports, the capabilities of just a normal layer two switch, but then we get the layer three routing all in one device. Then we have PCs and devices connected into these layer two switches. And notice each of these different ports are in different VLANs. They can be configured differently. As we look at setting up our layer three switches, we have to go through kind of the same process every time. First thing we need to do here is create our VLANs. You go in there, you do VLAN space, and then the ID between one and a thousand. Then you go ahead and name it as long as we're there. We create our switch virtual interface, our switch virtual interfaces for our VLANs next. That's where we go in and assign IP addresses to all of those SVIs. Then we configure the port as an access port, which ones are gonna to belong to that. And then we enable IP routing. And this is something that is different than using a layer two switch or a layer three router. On a layer three switch, we have to go in and say IP routing. Just like we have to for IP version six on a router, we have to go in and say, okay, you're gonna do routing now. Those are the main configuration steps for us to set up layer three. Once you've set up layer three switch for inner VLAN routing, it is much simpler to, to do than router on a stick. 
You're just dealing with one device. You're doing all the configuration right there. You're not having to, to match up VLANs between your, your layer two switches, your layer three routers, layer three switch. You just do it all on there. Now, to verify our connectivity, what we have to do is use the ping command where we ping between devices. That is the primary tool that you're gonna use for verification here. On a layer three switch, you have to look at how are we gonna route this traffic. Now, in order for a network to be reachable, to be able to route traffic to there, that network needs to be advertised. We need to know what networks are available so we can route traffic to those networks. There are two types of networking. One is static, one is dynamic. Static is where you as the administrator, you manually go in there, enter in all the routing information. Dynamic is where you let the routers, the devices themselves de decide which is the best path to the destination. Now, in order to enable routing here on our layer three switches, we have to have a routed port. A routed port is what allows routing to happen on our layer three switch. Now, in order to create a routed port, what we have to do is disable all of the layer two switch port features. When we disable the switch port features on a layer two port, that is what allows us to do the routing, to get traffic across our device to other networks. Now, how we do this is we take a layer two port and we issue the no switch port command on it. When we issue that no switch port command, it converts it into a layer three interface. At that point in time, we can use the IP version four configuration to set it up like we would on a router. And so we can make a connection to a router, we can make a connection to another layer three switch, but we have to do a no switch port on a layer two port that converts it into a layer three interface. And then we can go ahead and configure it using our IP version four. Here we have a, a, a scenario, a big high level picture of where we're taking this and how this is working. What we have here is we have D1 is a layer three switch. We have it configured. We, we have our SVI set up. We, we, we've configured routing. We have a, another router, R1 over here. And what we're using is a protocol called OSPF, open shortest path first to do our routing. This allows us to make routing decisions to route traffic across multiple networks to get to its destination. Now, OSPF right now is beyond the scope of what we're looking at, but just understand it's a protocol in which we use to make decisions on how to get there. It's, a, it's an automatic protocol, and so the devices themselves decide which is the best path to get to the destination. You as an administrator don't have to go in and make any changes to that once you have it set up and working. We have OSPF running on both the layer three switch D1 and the layer three router R1. OSPF is able to route between the networks. It's able to route between VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. It's also able to route to the 10.10.10.0 network. And OSPF knows how to get to the 10.10.20.0 network. And all of these devices should be able to communicate with each other because of this routing protocol. And this layer three switch right here, and we've turned this gig zero, or sorry, gig one zero one port into a routed port. And now we can route between devices with it. And that connects into R1. And so this is where our routed port fits into the scenario is right here. The configuration here for routing on our layer three switch. The first thing we have to do is configure a routed port. That's where we do the no switch port. It takes out basically all the layer two functionality of that port and it turns it into a layer three interface. Once we do that, then we have to go ahead and say, okay, we want to turn on routing because we want to route between either our, our layer three switch and another layer three switch or our layer three switch and a layer three router, we want to do routing, we have to enter in the command IP routing. Then once we say we're going to do routing, what are we going to use? 
what routing method are we going to use? You could use static, you could use dynamic, and dynamic there's open short, shortest path first, and a number of other protocols you could use there. Then once you have that all set up and configured, you need to verify your routing. And the show IP route command is probably the best way to do that. There's several other methods, but the show IP route, when you do that on a device, it'll list out all the networks it knows how to get to. And it'll list out the ones that are directly connected. It'll also list out all the remote networks it knows how to get to. And then finally, verify your connectivity, typically done with the ping command. If the ping fails, I use the trace route after that to give me a general idea where the failure occurs. It was my pleasure to bring you this wonderful episode on inter-VLAN routing using layer three switches. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, captechify.com, and you can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This here is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.